whenever we met again, there was a genuine friendship, Christian friendship. Amen. That man is resting in the grave today. I, I'm so thankful yes. that God was patient with me. Yes. That one sin could have kept me out of the kingdom. Sin is that deadly. As I say again, one sin drove Adam out of paradise or out of the Garden of Eden. And Moses did not go into the promised land because of one sin. Look, brethren and sisters, let us not try to argue these, these points. Yes. It's very important for us to realize what sin is. Um, look, I believe that our body negatively responds to sin. Now, I can't prove it all to you, but um, you know what a polygraph test is, or a lie detector test. Now, they put all the electrodes over you and so on. Now, there have been people that can pass a polygraph test. Not many. I don't know what they are, whether they're pathological liars or what it is that... Um, but... Yeah. But I tell you, those of us that are not that kind of person, we're going to react very negatively um, when we do wrong. And it does something negative for, to our bodies. When I was a student at the university, well, I was a graduate student at the University of Sydney and I was doing tests I decided to do something, one on my own. I don't think my professor would have been too happy about me doing it without him knowing about it. But anyway, he might have said no to me. But I got, eventually got 10 undergraduate students to come up and do these tests, one at a time, of course. And I just put electrodes on their, two of their fingers and I had it connected to a monitor to see what would happen. Galvanic skin response. Um, and um, I also had tracing paper there so that I could rip that off if I thought there was some ambiguity on the monitor. I didn't have to do that. But I asked each one of those ten, one at a time, Ten questions. So I had a hundred answers at the end. And I asked the most innocent questions. Nothing emotive or, or in privacy. I asked them, what is your name? How old are you? What suburb of Sydney do you live in? Etc. Etc. Just, just the common. And I said to them, "I'm going to ask you ten questions. I want you to answer some of them correctly and some incorrectly." I didn't say tell lies or you know or decide, try to deceive me or anything like that. I want to see what the results were. Now this wasn't a full polygraph test, although it has many of the same kind of results. What is your name? You might say Bob Smith, let's say, and I'm watching. It's just wobbling along as it always does. I knew his name was Bob Smith. Um, how old are you? Nineteen. that's over. And 
for about a second to two seconds. Ooh. I knew he wasn't 19. I didn't know how old he was. I didn't make one mistake in those hundred. The body was reacting. You know, the, the neural system was being depressed every time they said something that was not accurate. I don't know what the character of these young fellows was, but in any case, everyone, not one ambivalent, ambivalent. I tell you, sin is destructive. That's what it is. Of course, eventually it comes back again to normality, and you can ask another question. But that's how we see it. All right, now, I want to come to a conclusion, a very quick conclusion. Psalms 51, Paul, uh, uh, David's confession. Let's see if we can get some of the lessons. You may even get more than I've gotten out of it, but um, what can we do when we sin? So let's start with verse 3. Psalms 51, verse 3. He's asked for washing and thorough washing and so on and cleansing and then he says, for I acknowledge my transgression. That's the first thing we've got to do. We've got to acknowledge our sin or our transgression. If we don't do it, we'll never repent. We must acknowledge it. And then if you come to verse 4, he recognized that he'd not only sinned by killing a man or having a man killed in battle and of course his adulterous efforts with Bathsheba but he'd sinned against God. Every sin is against God no matter what kind of a sin it is. It is against the God of heaven. That's why we have to not only confess to those we have in any way hurt, but we have to confess to God through Jesus. Verse 10, that transformation, that sanctification, that cleansing, create in me a what? That means we've got a dirty heart or a defiled heart when we sin. And now we have to ask for God through Jesus to create that new heart, <coughs> that clean heart. And then we ask for the rejoicing and the joy of the salvation of God. Only then. And in verse 15, we praise him for what he's done for us. Oh, I tell you, this is what we're looking for. All right, now I want to come to that last point, the final sin. It's obviously not murder, although if you hate someone, you murder. Isn't that what the Bible says? It's not necessarily stealing. Bad sins though these are. Or adultery. Or any of those gross sins. Let's come over to the 14th chapter of Revelation. That's where I start. Revelation 14, verse 5. Talking about the hundred and forty and four thousand. And in their mouth was found what? No guile. I want you to underline that. It says, for they are without fault before the throne of God. How many sins does it lay out there? One. 